In the summer of 1893, the World's Columbian Exposition, or what we now know as the Chicago World's Fair, was in full swing. Over the course of six months, the festivities pulled in crowds totaling over 27 million people, drawing tourists from over 40 different countries. Artists and entertainers from around the world came to find fame in the fair's venues, and despite the facade of inclusion and multiculturalism, black artists and entertainers were discouraged from performing on the main stages. But that didn't stop one young pianist from St. Louis from attempting to steal the show. My name is Nathaniel Newland. I'm the Assistant Director of Education here at Discovery Park of America, and this is a moment of discovery. When 24-year-old Scott Joplin played in the clubs on the outskirts of the fairgrounds, he set the city ablaze with a new sound, what was then called jig piano, which was a blend of classical and West African sound played at a syncopated or irregular rhythm. The audiences noted that the tunes were rather ragged, and thus ragtime was born. Joplin had been born in Texarkana, Arkansas in 1868 to a family of railroad workers, but he found his niche in churches and clubs in St. Louis in his late teens and early 20s. And then with the opportunity of a lifetime at hand, Chicago had to be conquered. Returning to Sedalia, Missouri after the exposition, Joplin played at the Maple Leaf Club, where he was scouted out by publisher John Stilwell Stark. Joplin agreed to just a 1% royalty on the sale of his signature piece, aptly titled The Maple Leaf Rag after the Maple Leaf Club, which earned him just $4 in his first year. Then as sales soared in the, into the tens of thousands in subsequent years, Joplin would never make more than $600 annually from the sale of what would become the foundational, the archetypal piece of the ragtime genre. In subsequent years, Joplin would write the now infamous pieces The Entertainer, March Majestic, Elite Syncopations, and dozens of others. In 1904, he married the love of his life, Freddie Alexander, but she hated being called Freddie, so he said, I'll call you my Bethina. Freddie passed away just 10 weeks into their marriage, an event that would alter Scott, or Scott Joplin's music thenceforth. His tunes became melancholy and solemn, epitomized by his first piece after her death, Bethina, a concert waltz, my personal favorite. Joplin died of dementia in 1917 at only 48 years old, but perhaps no other person in American history had so quickly established a foundation for an entire art form. When the so-called ragtime revival struck in the 1970s with the release of the movie The Sting, the world was again inspired to dance to what the St. Louis Sentinel called a veritable call of the wild which mightily stirred the pulses of city-bred people. This craze has been going on ever since, even right here at Discovery Park of America, where Scott Joplin's rags are played on a continuous loop right here on Mill Ridge, an exhibit focused on the period of Scott Joplin's career. February is, of course, Black History Month, and as we examine the legacies and lasting impacts of the brave and adventurous men and women who paved the way for equality, we cannot ignore the king of ragtime, the grandfather of jazz, the great-grandfather of popular music, a man who made the world dance, if only for a little while. For more moments of discovery, visit us right here at Discovery Park of America in Union City, Tennessee.